it wasn't even their first issue, right? There have been breaches in the past. If you look at the internet, you will see that it's awash with people expressing disappointment in Ledger as a company because apparently they haven't learned from previous breaches. I saw this picture on Twitter, which was also included in this article that is extremely funny, that kind of basically just illustrates the situation perfectly. I'm telling you, memes have a special way of describing things in just one photo. A photo speaks a thousand words. So that <laughs> epic security. Anyway, there are some things to consider. And towards the end, I'm going to talk about what I personally think the real danger is and what you should be really, really careful about. And going forward from here, how we as a crypto community can work to negate or at least rectify this issue. So first things first, crypto wasn't hacked, blockchain wasn't hacked, Bitcoin wasn't hacked, cryptocurrency wasn't hacked, DeFi wasn't hacked, self-custody ship wasn't hacked. What happened was someone let the burglar into the house. So an analogy would be that if you literally just handed your keys to a burglar and then just walked away and walked for them and waited for them to come in your house and take whatever they wanted. Okay. They didn't break into the house. They didn't find a back door into the house. You know, they didn't crack the lock or anything. They basically just handed the lock to the criminals who came in and took the stuff, right? Or installed malicious code to drain wallets, etc. So technology is actually quite good nowadays. The privacy levels and security levels of cryptocurrencies are actually really, really good. The weak link is always the human being, right? This employee was socially engineered and fished, right? Personally, I get lots of emails and I can just tell that a lot of them are phishing emails. But my attitude is such that it's a phishing email unless otherwise stated. That's my attitude because I've seen so many. And with that attitude, I'm very, very unlikely to fall from one of these fishes. Never say never, of course, but highly unlikely. And it points out the fact that many of these companies aren't actually as tight when it comes to policy as they should be. And a lot of people have pointed this out on social media. Now, another thing that people have pointed out is that we don't know who the attacker is, okay? This is obviously someone who is a sophisticated programmer or a group that knows a lot about, you know, the code of DeFi, someone who knows about the Ledger's code, perhaps, you know, it's GitHub, right? You can probably access the code anyway and analyze it yourself because in order to install something in a code, you need to understand the code, have the code. So who knows what level of insider stuff was going on here anyway, right? Another thing that others have suggested is, of course, the government might be who's hacked it, right? Because, again, we don't know who the hacker is, right? So one person's hacker is one person's security agent, right? So the, how do we know that this isn't, you know, the US government or the Chinese government or Russia, South Korea, South Africa, whomever, you know, a Nigerian programmer somewhere? We have no idea who the person is. And just as likely as it might be, an, um, a malicious hacker, it may well be the government, the powers that be have employed people to sabotage as much as possible this cryptocurrency thing. Because remember, it poses a major threat to the status quo and the powers that be and the banks and you know what, yada, yada. The freedom of the individual, the self-determination of the individual, self-governance and self, you know, Banking, <laughs> self-banking is a big move into the information age that's going to cause you know, a lot of these big banks to collapse in the coming future. And it is in their best interest to continue to sabotage the work that we're doing here. The final thing that I wanted to say, and this is probably the most important part of this whole thing that I find that nobody else is talking about, is this. The unprecedented levels of KYC that we're having to do these days, not just in finance, you know, the banks, etc. Even during the last few years with the global lockdowns, we had an unprecedented collection of personal data, personal information, all of which are now sitting in these servers, in the cloud, in offices, the security of which we have no idea. And if something like Ledger can be breached so easily via social engineering, 
who's to say that the server that's holding my home address, your home address, and the service that's holding all the KYC information that we did on these exchanges, as well as the information about our wallets and what our activities are and the volume of trades and how much wealth each person has, isn't sitting on a server that someone has just put in a, an infected USB key. And that infected USB key has now let in a bunch of criminals who can now knock at your door, you know, come to your house and knock with pew pews. Okay, because now the email hasn't worked. They sent you an email you didn't click. They replaced your, you know, DeFi page you noticed and you didn't click. And everything that they've tried hasn't basically got you. Before, what all they had was your email address. They had your browser uh, cookies and stuff. But now they have your home address. They know how much you own, where you live. They have your wallet information. What's to stop them from coming to your house with a ledger nano of their own, a QR code and pew pews, get you to transfer the stuff and disappear forever. Personally, I think about this quite frequently. And even if you are supposedly anonymous and you interact with these KYC platforms, then you are in direct danger of this stuff. Not financial advice, not conspiracy theory advice. <laughs> Do your own research and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.